Brexit means Brexit. And at a meeting of 27 EU governments to discuss what Brexit means, a special visit from British Prime Minister Theresa May. In more than two years' time, the PM will have to get used to being that awkward plus one on the guest list instead of having a seat at the top table. Now MPs have backed triggering Article 50, May plans to take Britain out of the EU single market and says she's willing to walk away from a bad deal. But her Maltese counterpart told Euronews all that tough talk could be just a bluff. I understand that um, Theresa May would want to position herself in that way at the start of negotiations. When you're negotiating, you definitely have to convey the message that you're not in it, uh, it's a not a do or die sort of negotiation. Making the case for Brexit here in Malta is in some ways quite symbolic. It gained independence from Britain in 1964 and today some 12,000 British people live here, making them the country's largest foreign community. The weather's much better, so is the food. And these British expats don't have to go through the awful bother of mastering a foreign tongue. That's because English is also an official language. So what do some of these Brits abroad want from Brexit? Colin Pilling is a former RAF serviceman who's been in Malta for more than two decades. One of the main things I would say to her is look after your British expat community and also our counterparts in the United Kingdom if we lose the bilateral agreements, then pensions, health care and all the ancillary ways of living here. And that is one of the major things that is worrying us. I think pensions and health care are an issue. But I think, you know, as long as you can get a, a deal, you know, with the EU countries so that the people living in the EU, British people living in the EU can remain, and I, and I do feel that the people living from the, in, you know, in, in the UK or from the EU sh should be able to remain as well. Hugely complex questions that are without precedent in the EU. Leaders will face many a sleepless night in Brussels before they get closer to any answers. James Franey, Euronews, Malta.